Salutations to all points of the triangle. Freda Chris here from the YouTube channel Sabrosa. Sabrosa means beneath the rose and symbolizes secret and esoteric knowledge. Meetings held with a rose hung from the ceiling signified that the details of the meeting were to be kept secret. The term Sabrosa is also related to alchemy and Rosicrucian philosophy. For this podcast, I wanted to share with you the Paracelsian Tria Prima, or the three essential elements, mercury, sulfur, and salt. The ancient alchemists held the number seven to be a sacred number, representing completion. Alchemists believed that the seven days of the week correlated to the seven ancient planets, to the seven metals, An alchemist also believed that there were seven stages to the alchemical process of transmutation. The first four stages of the alchemical process were said to correlate to the four elements of fire, water, air, and earth. The fifth, sixth, and seventh stages of alchemy corresponded to sulfur, mercury, and salt. The first stage of alchemy is calcination working with fire, and corresponds to the element of fire. In the Tarot, fire is represented by the suit of swords. The second stage, dissolution, corresponds to the element of water and to the suit of cups in the Tarot. The third stage, that of separation, corresponds to the element of air or the suit of wands in the Tarot. The fourth stage, conjunction, corresponds to the element of earth. In the tarot, earth is represented by the suit of pentacles, or discs, or coins. Conjunction is the act of combining, or wedding, as in the chemical wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz, one of the original Rosicrucian manifestos. The fifth stage of alchemy was that of fermentation. Sulfur represents the soul. Mercury represents the spirit, and salt represents the body. These three alchemical elements were referred to as the three essentials, or the tria prima, and also referred to as philosophic, or sophic for short, as in sophic sulfur, sophic mercury, and sophic salt. The sixth stage of alchemy is distillation, separating the spirit. This is where we get the word spirits as it relates to alcohols that come from distillation. Distillation corresponds to sophic mercury. The seventh stage of alchemy is coagulation or working with sophic salt. Thus you will obtain the glory of the whole universe, says the Emerald Tablet of Hermes referring to this final step. The Emerald Tablet of Hermes is where we get the concept of hermetic philosophy As above, so below. Salt represents the leftover solids from the alchemical process, or the philosopher's stone, sometimes called the red dragon, or the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is an example of what sulfur looks like. This piece of sulfur was purchased from the Fossil Cartel in Portland, Oregon. The description card that came with this piece of sulfur reads as follows. Sulfur is thought to be the ninth most abundant element in the entire universe. It frequently occurs in basalt and many volcanic rocks. In ancient times, it was referred to as brimstone, which is derived from Latin, meaning burning stone. Sulfur has many industrial uses, including sulfuric acid, detergents, dyes, explosives, and the manufacture of rubber and rayon. The major producers of sulfur are the United States, Canada, Poland, France, Russia, and Japan. Mercury is a metal that when at room temperature is a liquid. Mercury is also called quicksilver. Liquid mercury comes from only one source, and that is the mining and processing of cinnabar ore. Cinnabar ore is placed in a rotary furnace where it's exposed to both heat and oxygen, and the cinnabar ore literally sweats out liquid mercury. 
If you place a cinnabar crystal in an open fire, you can literally watch liquid mercury sweat out of the pores in the cracks of the crystal. Cinnabar crystals are very rare and somewhat valuable. Cinnabar ore is much more common, and it is the ore that is used to create liquid mercury. Cinnabar is a bright red color, and cinnabar crystals are a beautiful deep red with a silver metallic sheen. There is a very rare and is such very expensive cinnabar that is black and silver in color, and this is called meta cinnabar, and has a very high mercury content. These examples of cinnabar were purchased from the fossil cartel in Portland, Oregon. And the description card they came with reads as follows. Cinnabar, or mercury sulfide, is the primary ore of mercury and was once the source of the pigment vermilion. Cinnabar is rare in crystals, more often showing up in massive or granular aggregate deposits. The name is from the Persian Zinzifra and the Arabic Zinzifer, both meaning dragon's blood. The best crystal specimens come from China. Other sources are Spain, Peru, Italy, and California in the United States. Cinnabar is a stone of alchemy and magic, transformation and refinement. This stone allows one to see the energy behind matter and to shift reality by personal will. Cinnabar, in addition to being used as a pigment for makeup and paint before we knew about the dangers of mercury poisoning, was also used in jewelry. This vintage pendant comes from the 1940s from a mine here in Oregon called Horse Heaven Mercury Mine. The area encompassing Horse Heaven Mercury Mine would later become the Bhagwan Puram, the home of the spiritual leader Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh and his followers. Today, Horse Heaven Mine is listed on the Register of Historic Oregon Ghost Towns, the town and the mining equipment largely still intact. This is an example of sophic salt, also called halide or common salt, known as sodium chloride. This example is a pink Himalayan salt. The fine and coarse Himalayan salt were purchased from the Spice and Tea Exchange. The larger piece of halite, or pink Himalayan salt, was purchased from the fossil cartel, and the description card that it came with reads as follows. Halite is sodium chloride, also known as common salt. The name is derived from the Greek hals, for salt. Halite can be found as masses or in cubic or hopper crystals. It is widespread in large evaporated deposits from seawater. It can be colorless, white, orange, blue, pink, and purple. The orange coloring is due to traces of hematite. Blue and purple coloring is due to defects in the crystal structure. Fine specimens of halide are found in the Himalayas, Poland, California, and New York. Metaphysically, it is used for purification and cleansing. Many people today think of alchemists as crazed madmen, working away in a vain attempt to transmute base metals into gold, but this is largely a smear campaign and not the entire truth. Alchemy can be looked at as a lens through which we can perceive our world in terms of different qualities. For example, the element of fire is said to represent things that are hot or sudden action, burning things with a hotter, fiery quality like a fiery temper. This symbol is called the Hermetic Rose Cross and comes from Rosicrucian philosophy and the somewhat ma modern magic of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, made famous by the popular occultist Aleister Crowley. The rose in the center has 22 petals, representing the 20 true Hebrew letters and the 22 trumps of the tarot. The top of the cross is colored yellow and represents air, or wands, which is said to be ruled by Sophic Mercury. The arm on the right is colored blue, corresponding to the element of water, or the suit of cups in the tarot, and is said to be ruled by sulfic salt. The arm on the left is colored red, corresponding to the element of fire, or swords in tarot, and is said to be ruled by the element of sulfic mercury. 
The white area below the rose is said to represent the so-called fifth element, that of spirit. The bottom of the cross represents the earth, or pentacles and dis and tarot, the physical world, and has the four colors of Malkuth. Malkuth comes from the Kabbalistic tree of life, where it also sits at the very bottom, and also represents here this concept of earth or the material world. In the spiritual alchemy of the Kabbalists, the initiate seeks to leave the Malkuth, or physical earth plane, and ascend the tree of life to the top, kether or crown, via the Gnostic concept of the middle way or middle path, not swaying to extremes on either side, but taking the middle way and ascending into Gnosis or Nirvana or Christ consciousness. Much like the latter found between the pillars Joaquin and Boaz and Masonic tracing boards. If you're interested in learning about the symbolism of the Hermetic Rose Cross, I recommend Lon Milo Doquette's book, Understanding the Thoth Tarot, where he devotes an entire chapter to breaking down the symbolism of the Hermetic Rose Cross. The act of drawing the Hermetic Rose Cross, or creating your own, as I have done here, can be thought of as a meditation or a meditative mandala, much like the Azoth of the philosophers from alchemy and Rosicrucian philosophy. Crystals and gems have many properties that we are just beginning to understand and aren't readily apparent to the human eye. For example, crystals can store information and modern computers would be impossible without crystals. Crystals can also be used to tune different vibrational frequencies as in a crystal diode radio. By combining crystals with sacred geometry, we are able to use the crystals for healing, spiritual alchemy, and manifesting the things that we desire in life. One way of combining sacred geometry and crystals would be to keep your crystals in a bag with a symbol from sacred geometry, such as this bag with the flower of life embroidered on it. Crystal grids are another and more powerful way of combining crystals and sacred geometry. There are many different types of crystal grids made out of wood, plastic, and laminated paper. This crystal healing grid incorporates the sacred geometry of Metatron's cube and the platonic solids. I've placed halite, sulfur, and cinnabar on this grid to represent the tria prima, or the three essential elements of the philosophers, sulfur, mercury, and salt. There are many different designs for crystal grids. Here's another example of a crystal healing grid. This grid uses the sacred geometry of the flower of life. The lapis lazuli, hematite, and howlite on this grid represent the element of water. Crystal grids can be used as a meditative mandala or for any type of meditation that you desire. Stones or crystals are placed on the grid one at a time with intention. An example of placing crystals on a grid with intention would be repeating silently or out loud, I will get this job or I want or I will improve my life in this way for each stone that you place on the grid. You can leave the grid set up in your home to help manifest what you want, or sweep the crystals off the grid into a crystal bag and carry the charged crystals around with you, especially in circumstances like maybe a job interview after you've charged the crystals with your intentions for getting that job. To learn about crystal grids and different patterns and techniques, check out the book Sacred Grid Therapies, Crystal Healing Treatments by Bren Michael Simonin. This book and crystal grids are also available from the Fossil Cartel and sacredrx.com. To learn about sacred geometry, I recommend The Flower of Life, Volume 1 and 2 by Drumvalo Melchizedek and his Flower of Life workshop on the Gaia app or the Gaia channel. It is my hope that this video has helped familiarize you with the concept of the seven alchemical elements. Fire, water, air, earth, sulfur, mercury, and salt. And to give you some ideas about how you can use these concepts to perceive your world, to practice your own spiritual alchemy, to transmute a base existence into enlightenment or a golden existence and some different ways you can incorporate crystals that represent these elements with sacred geometry to manifest healing and spiritual growth. So mote it be. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, share this video with your friends and on social media, 
give the video a thumbs up or subscribe to the Sabrosa YouTube channel for many more related videos about spiritual alchemy, Rosicrucian philosophy, and other esoteric and occult topics. New videos every new moon. Thank you for watching. Peace Profound and LVX.